morning, my brilliant and beautiful friends. And today we are going to talk about the upcoming full moon happening in the energy of Aquarius. This is going to be happening August 15th, so we are just a couple days away. And today on August 13th, as I'm recording this, and yes, I know this is a little bit later than the videos normally are, but today has a pretty significant energy happening with it as we have had Jupiter who was retrograde and was, is one of our bigger bodied energies. And he also teeters that line of inside outside planet as well, right? But Jupiter just recently went direct. He stationed direct on the 11th. Now, just a couple days later by the 13th, even though this lunation does not completely wrap up Jupiter in the energy, his influence will absolutely be felt. As well, we've got this full moon happening in the energy of Aquarius, Aquarius who is naturally ruled by Uranus. And Uranus has recently gone retrograde on the same day that Jupiter came direct. So when planets are stationing and they're moving, they bring an intensity that lasts quite some time with them. So having those two just before we're having this big, beautiful lunation that's going to form a T-square with one of our powerful asteroids, it's also in the energy of Taurus, plus it's, you know, opposite a stellium of energy happening in Leo energies, this creates creates an impact that's important for us to take note of the level of intensity. Now, what is it about, though? What is this whole full moon? What's its whole story about? I'm going to definitely pull up the chart so we can look over the energies, but I want to tell you, one of the things that keeps coming to me over and over and over again, and I have listened to the astrology, I have read the astrology, I have read the past in the astrology, I followed the past few um, full moons in Aquarius that we have had, because the energy at this time to me, I don't know about you guys, but to me it still feels like they're static, but I'm, I'm tuning into maybe the right station, I'm tuning into some intuitive messages that I feel like, holy business, where did that come from? At the same time, I've got this call and this urge towards leadership and a change in my future. So I don't know about you guys if you're feeling that, but the overall message that I continue to come to the table with, it seems to be in the universal vibe, is that this is a time with this Aquarian full moon to first of all do what the full moon asks us to do, and that is to end something, to acknowledge something, or to make an adjustment to something, right? Something's already been happening. It's already been in play when we come to the full moon. Now we need to make the changes or we need to find out where we need to make the changes to the project, to the thing, or to us. Now across the energies of Leo that we're going to see, this is the energy of the heart. It's generous, it's big, it's giving, it's bold, it is self-expressive, right? Like we talked about this new moon that we also just had a few weeks ago in the energy of Leo, and it was not time to pull the coward card. You guys remember me saying that? It's a time to speak up, express yourself, allow new beginnings, new heart, new expression, new joy to come to the surface. But the energy of Leo is also very, very much so about you being the unique version of you, right? Like, what is your gig? What do you bring to the table? What do you bring to the table that's absolutely the same as everybody who's ever brought it before and different than anybody who's ever brought it before? What is your language of the heart? That's, the, that's what we speak from. Now, because Leo energy is ruled by the sun, the sun is your vitality, your light, your heat your vitality, your ta-da, here's who I am, right? So it's a very, very big energy. And with the stellium of planets, which means a whole bunch of planets, right? So we've got three or more planets in one sign. This is a time opposite this full moon where still it's not time for the coward card, you guys. And it's not going to be for weeks and weeks down the road. It is a time to express. It is a time to shine, right? It is very much so about the you. Right, But now we have that opposing the Aquarius energy, which is about more of a we. This is a universal thing. This is about the whole tribe. This is about you're giving something for humanity or for a grouping, or you're taking a leadership position, or you're being inventive or innovative, or there's a sense of intuitive brilliance that is coming here. So we've got this opposition where at this time, just knowing that alone, what I can tell you is that this is a time 
to root down and grow. You're going to need to definitely grow where you are planted right now because you've been working on something. You've been moving towards something. Something's been in the work. Something's been in your mind. There's something you've been wanting to express. And even if you are loaded at the full moon with doubt, right? Because ideas and expansion with the energy of Jupiter, when we move to expansion, expansion, getting bigger, growing, moving more away from ourselves comes with a period of doubt. Every set of moon cycles that we have comes with this period of doubt. And is this the right thing? Am I doing the right thing? Am I hearing this correctly? With the energy of Aquarius and Leo, this is very... There's a lot of intuitive thought coming up, but there will be doubt here and you need to root down and grow at this full moon. Make the adjustments you need to, to see if your plans, your designs, whatever it is that you've got going on, are they on solid enough ground for you to be able to extend out, right? To use that Jupiter energy to expand. Now with Uranus retrograde also at this moon, this is where I say, check your foundations, right? And also get ready for some incredibly inventive, innovative endurance. Taurus is an earth energy and it's built for endurance. It's built to last. It is also a fixed energy, right? Aquarius is a fixed energy. Leo is a fixed energy. So what you're going to do here is end something, acknowledge something, or make an adjustment to something, but you're changing what is and staying the course. Root down and grow. Grow where you are planted. Do not give up. The season, the period of doubt is here. It's maybe upon you. Grow. Do not give up. With fixed energies, you got to stay the course because down the road, and especially as we move towards September, my friends, getting organized, getting it together, and getting it ready for 2020 this is where the work is just being done. You cannot give birth to something new without some labor, right? Okay, that is enough of that. Let's actually look at the chart and talk through the pieces of the astrology, okay? All right, my friends. So this are, there's a lot going on. And as you will see on this particular wheel, um, unlike other ones that I have shown or that I've pulled up or I've done for you guys, this one is also going to include the um, asteroids and we need to talk about the asteroids because we've got a big beautiful set of asteroids um, interventions happening at this particular full moon so we're going to talk all about the full moon and we are also going to talk about the connections it's making with these asteroids and why in the heck you even first care about things first okay. the full moon what's actually happening what's the astrology of a full moon in general so the full moon is happening in any sign, um, a part of a moon cycle. This one happens to be at 22 degrees of Aquarius. And the aspect that it makes is being in opposition or opposite the sun, right? So when the sun and the moon are opposite, we're going to have a full moon. And what's happening there is our needs versus our wants, our polarities are lit up. Should I do this? Should I do this? It feels like you're going in two different directions, but ultimately... The energy of an opposition, in order to resolve it, you've got to kind of meet in the middle. You find middle ground to see what needs to be ended, acknowledged, or adjusted so that you can stay the course with this particular energy that we've got going on at this moon, okay? Now, the lunar qualities, right, at a full moon, our instincts, our emotional security, all of these things are at their absolute peak when we come into a full moon space. So you could find that you have intense emotional reactions around this, or you feel this a bit more intensely. Now, with this particular moon being in Aquarius, Aquarius tends to be very, very aloof. It's a very aloof air sign, right? So not a ton of emotional attachment to things. That doesn't mean that they are cold-hearted and emotionless. That's not what the sign is about. They're just an air sign, so they live in the intellect, right? Like up in the head, so they can have a little bit more detachment, not only from their bodies, but from emotions and the depth that like a cancer would feel them. Okay, but this particular moon is bringing in so much heart that it is 
pretty much impossible for this airy moon to be <laughs> detached from the emotionalism. But where I feel like this particular full moon in Aquarius is great is that you can be a little bit more impartial about the things that you're thinking and you're feeling. So you're able to kind of look at things from a more objective space and that will help you with this energy of, yes, keep going. You need to keep going, okay? So the other thing to note about a full moon, and you can know this anytime a full moon rolls around, because it is in opposition. And opposition usually points us to relationships in some way, shape, or form. So I like to call it the relational aspect. At the full moon, if there is disharmony, if there is any sense of negative feeling, something being stuck within your relationships and with this particular full moon, your friendships or your groupings or your organizations, things you're tied to at more of a group level. If you're feeling like there's some kind of dis-ease or disease happening there, you may be looking to make some changes attach or detach from them as the case may be, okay? All right, now the actual astrology of this full moon, August 15th, 22 degrees of Aquarius, as you can see. Oh my goodness, look at all of this energy happening over here. We've got this big, beautiful moon over here. And on this side, this just stellium of planets. We've got Mercury. We've got the sun. We've got Venus. Oh my goodness, yes, we've got more asteroid information, but that's not the big asteroid that we're really, really concerned with at this point. But we've also got Mars as well. So with all of these energies in Leo, this push to express, this push to speak, this push to do your own thing, this push to give love, share love, be generous, all of those things to be the biggest breath thing on the stage are going to be absolutely abundant. But individually, these planets also have an impact. As we can see, this is very important here. At 22 degrees, we've also got the moon in opposition to Venus. Now, Venus has a very loving, giving, sensual, delicious kind of nature. But when she's in opposition, this creates a little bit of a challenge. So again, this will point us to relationships, right? Now, while Venus is always gonna bring the love no matter where she goes, she's trying to bring a softness to this particular opposition, but you may feel challenged within your relationships. Are you giving enough love? Are you getting enough? Are your needs met? Venus does have an impact on finances as well, so that could be something that you're looking at with the opposition being here. Now with Mars, we see these other ones and they are just too far away in aspect, but they do have impact, okay? Now Mars adds some intensity, some energy, some movement, some assertion, some aggression to this particular full moon. So you've got this Venus situation over here happening and it's all lovely and she's trying to bring this loving vibe to the table, right? And Mars is like, um, what? I'm not feeling that. So Mars is giving you the energy to speak up or to push, right? Or you can think of it as Venus is being loving, but she's not being completely forward, right? She's being a little bit passive. She's being a little bit coy. And Mars is like, stop being cute. Go say it. Go do it. We have to move, right? So Mars is there giving that completely opposite encouragement to this Venus energy and thus to the moon as we see these ties happening right here. It's actually lovely, right? Now, as you can see, down here as well, we've also got this involvement of Pluto with this particular moon, right? So this is an interesting space to be because Pluto is really about karma, but it is also about where there is some kind of dying off that needs to happen, right? Something needs to die off so that something else can live. Now, this is pointing over here in aspect to this moon. So where are your Aquarian things? The first thing you want to do is check which house this is happening in your chart because that'll tell you the arena of life where these changes are going to be made, where you're speaking up, where you need to stay the course, where you need to allow the transition to happen, right? But either way, in the energy of Aquarius, it's going to say, are you being a leader in your own life and your own future. Um, 
Are these the right friends and friendship groups for you? Um, is this your tribe or where is your tribe? It's going to ask you questions about technology. It's going to ask you questions about being innovative. Think of new ways to do things, to express yourself, to be yourself, to put your own special message out there, to expand with that energy of Jupiter, right? So it's going to ask you to relook over all of these things because this is a season. Like, do not fool yourself. This is a season of death, but it is the death of psychological change. Something has got to die off so that something else can live. The intellect is growing here. So with all of this intensity to change or to die off in some way, right? Across from, in opposition to these energies of Mercury, the Sun, Venus, Juno, Mars, right? This is that space where it is hard to just detach from your life. But what you want to do is kind of hover over it at this full moon and look at it like you're just hovering over your life for information so that you can see where you want to make the changes, right? Are you that person who you just haven't been able to quite join a tribe where you've kind of been a wallflower about it, right? Or have you been feeling like you're the black sheep of your family or whatever it is, right? Like you're going to speak out now and go find your own way. Now, we also look at this energy that we've got going here, this big, beautiful triangle we've got where the apex is pointing here to Vesta, who's in Taurus. Now, this creates a T-square, right? So we've got this moon over here in Aquarius. We've got this Leo stellium situation on this side. And then we've got this apex point that brings us right to the attention of Vesta. Now, Vesta is the energy of the hearth and the home, keeping the home fires burning, right? And the very first home I think of is this one, right? The one I've got here, my heart, my soul, my joy, in the energy of Taurus, it's in the body, it's in the material world. So where I'm telling you to root down and grow, plant or grow where you are planted and stay the course, continue the work that you're doing for your expansion is in the material world, right? Which is interesting because we've got all of this other energy that is very much so of the intellectual space, right? So allow the intellect, the innovation, the new thing the new mind, the new grouping, the new expression to give you the energy to point you back to your material world because this is where you've got to root down and grow. This is where, regardless of if that doubt creeps in, regardless of if you feel like you're seeing all of the benefits of all of the work that you're doing yet, keep going, my friends. Keep, keep, keep going, right? You have a voice. You have an expression. It's time to speak up, share it with us, but you've got to stay the course here. All right. Now, All I, right. I want to point out one other aspect before we wrap up and do a summary of this video. It's that we do still have, as you can see, this Jupiter-Neptune square, and it's still in effect. It's been in effect. It's not new information or anything like that. But because it is still in effect, one of the things that I just want to give you a little bit of a caution to, right? Is the square is asking us for action. It's telling us to move, that it needs our attention. It stimulates us into some kind of movement, right? But what can happen with Jupiter and Neptune is that we make it too big, right? Like, so that's the question I have for you and I wanna caution you. Look at your plans. Look at what you're designing. Look what you're taking forward. I want you to dream big. We need this Jupiter and Neptune to think between the worlds, to think big, dream big, create the thing that nobody's seen before. Do it your own way. But have you got the material foundation in your life to build this dream upon. And that doesn't mean do you have the money that you need to do the thing. Maybe it does actually for you. But it's about are you moving in the material plane towards building a foundation or a space that can actually hold whatever the dream is? Because what you don't want to do with this Jupiter-Neptune energy is deceive yourself, right? Make it seem like it's such a good idea or this is the thing, this is the dream. We've got the North Node in Cancer. Your destiny, messages about your destiny are speaking to you, even though they may not be completely clear, but you don't want to... Um, make something too exaggerated. Instead, use this full moon to look at where you need to adjust that structure or adjust the idea or maybe come to acknowledge that something is out of place or something needs to be judged up a little bit so that the foundation underneath you is solid enough 
to carry the dream. Now, again, that square is asking us for action, so create the dream, right? You've got Neptune over here in Pisces, totally comfortable in retrograde, so you could even be pulling a dream from the past, a vision from the past, a creative project from the past. Jupiter is also in his home sign, so totally comfortable, full power, because he's direct right now as well, but he is in Sagittarius, and he's like, let's expand it out. So somewhere between a vision that you have and the ready expansion, you're going like this. You're like, yeah, I'm in action. I'm moving. I'm doing something. Now just make sure that that foundation is solid enough to handle what the vision is. And if the foundation is not there yet, first of all, build the foundation to the needs that you need. Now keep in mind, I told you the focus is to plant to plant where you grow, to grow where you are planted with this moon, which means this may be a step-by-step -step process. Maybe everything does not unfold in four weeks, but there is significant progress being able to be made. This is the kind of full moon that you want to have as we get ready to move into September. August and September are very significant times for us as they get us ready to get organized, be detail-oriented, go over these things, make the adjustments we need, really have a lot of forward motion. Saturn will be coming out of retrograde in September, and all of this is critical because in 2020 we don't have a ton of forward motion we'll be doing a lot of retrograding especially of the personal planet so look around check the foundation stick with what you're doing right this is where you build staying power if you're gonna have anything good there's some staying power that's got to be behind it and within it intuitive messages, innovation, new levels of brilliance, and new levels of you expressing that brilliance are coming to the table with this particular moon. So I cannot wait to see what you create. Please put in the comment section down below, where is this manifesting for you in your chart? Where do these energies ring true? What are you working on? Whatever it is that you've got going on, please share a little bit of your story down below because I'm always sending love, guidance, and support to anything that gets put down there, okay? All right, you guys, like this video, comment, share, subscribe. Have a brilliant, brilliant full moon time, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye, everybody.